It's often super useful to have timers inside your PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to go into slideshow mode. And then if I click anywhere, you're going to see these two timers move along. Now it is sped up. It's not actually 60 seconds, but I'm going to show you how to get to 60 seconds as well using these two methods. So my name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, using Together Workplace that I'm covering on my channel. So let's get started with this trick. So here we are in a blank slide on PowerPoint, and we're going to do this using only shapes and animations. By the way, if you just want to download a copy on this file, then there is a link in the description to get this exact file and you can replicate what you see. So I learned this trick from a friend of mine, Mr. Sam Thomas, when he was teaching me a course about stand-up comedy a couple of years ago. So I'm going to go to shapes and draw a rectangle. I'm going to do this one first and go most of the way along the page. It has to end at the end of the page. Otherwise, this trick doesn't work. Next up, I'm going to go to animations and I'm going to choose fly out. But I'm going to choose the effect options to be to left like that. And I'm going to change the duration. So I'm going to do this for five seconds and keep that as on click. And I'm going to go to the animation pane. And if I play, that's essentially what it's doing. It is doing that timer over five seconds. Now, a couple more things to make this nicer. I'm going to go to the shape format. I'm going to change the color of the shape fill. That's, of course, optional, but this is important. Take off the outline and then duplicate it. So in the Home tab, under Copy, you have this thing called Duplicate. only exists in PowerPoint, not in Word and Excel for some reason, but it's pretty useful. So this second one, we're actually going to go to the animations, and this one's going to have no animation. And we're going to make this shape have an outline, which is black, and the shape fill is going to be no fill. So the opposite of the other one. And we're going to just overlay this one on top of the other one. Make sure that the outline is in front, because now what can happen is it gives me that outline as well, which is pretty useful when you're doing a timer so you can see what's going on. Big limitation of this is that in the animations, the duration can go up to a level. If I go a big number there, it will stop at 59, 59 seconds. So if you want to make it exactly one minute, you would do a one minute delay and then 59 seconds, which would make it look like that. So there's a one second delay and then it starts and then it clears. What do you do if you want to make it longer than that? Well, what you can do is you can copy both of these objects and paste them. And then in the second one, you can say that this has the same animation, but this will start after previous. And in the animation pane, it shows that it does the first one and then it does the second one. Show you what that looks like if I make this, for example, three seconds, enter. You're going to see that this one's going to clear and then this one's going to go. So I'm going to press play. Does a one second delay, clears that. And when that one finishes, it goes like this. Now it doesn't work if you do one side by side. I, I thought that might work um, of doing the first one sort of like this and the second one afterwards like that and then getting more minutes. But that doesn't actually work because it will still fly out to the end of the page. So just to show you, if I have another shape like this, that is going to be I go to shape fill and then more fill colors. And then I'm going to do a transparency of about 50% and make it completely different color. Like that. Press OK. Now, if I press play, it will go through it to the end of the sheet because that's what fly out does. So it only works if it's at the corner of the sheet. Now I did try some other animations to see if they would work well. Things like wipe, but that will not work well because that is kind of like a fly out, but also a fade together. And also the motion paths. The motion paths didn't seem to work um, and they were quite hard to deal with. So the fly out until the end of the page is the way to go for this one. I'm gonna do some undoing there. And they both say one because the second one finishes after the first one goes. Now, if you want to have time indicators, then that it would just be a text box. So here I could say, for example, 60 
and then make that centered. And then if I control and drag, it will duplicate the object. And if I shift, then it will force me to stay in line. So hold down control, shift and drag. I do that all the time to keep in line. And then I do it until it shows me the halfway point. And then I can control shift and drag again until the end for zero. And then I can get in between these two objects by just estimating and writing 15 and then control click on these three. And I will go to shape format align and distribute horizontally. Really love that feature. A lot of people don't know it exists and align align top just in case. And you could do the same with 45 seconds. Uh, you could also, if you want to have kind of little lines from them. So if you draw a line, you can get to from there to there and you can make that black. The trick is having the connector. So having the green thing when you do it, let me show you again. So if I do like from this text box, do it on the gray icon to the gray icon and that will be green to green. That happens because it's in the middle of the shape. But if I do another one from the 15, I can do it from there to straight down. And there we go. And what this means, the connector, it means they will always stay glued to that shape. This one has two connectors, so it will stay glued to the both shapes. Um, you can only get the two ones if you go in the middle of a shape, but um, works well enough with the, all of them. And then you can just select them. And I would probably make it a black lion like that. So next up to doing this one, this one's a little bit trickier. So what you need to do is again, with shapes, we're going to draw a circle to draw a perfect circle, by the way, draw the oval and hold down shift. And that will make sure that it was a perfect circle like that. And then I'm going to make it kind of a light orange color and black outline. And I'm also going to draw a line that's going to be from the middle right till the top. And the best way to do that is if you draw a line between the two connectors, so it's showing you as green, but, and then you take note of what this says. So this is 8.58 and we're gonna halve it 4.29, but we're going to, slightly move it. So press the arrow button left and right to get rid of those connectors because we don't want the connector and we just want to do half, which is 4.29 and should be exactly half. And then we're going to change it to black. And in the outline, we're going to choose the arrows to be this one, which is the circle on one side and the arrow on the other side. And we're going to choose the weight to be much thicker, about three. And we don't want it showing like that. So we're going to rotate and flip vertical. There we go. Next up, we're going to add an animation. If you do it just to this one on its own, I'm gonna show you why it doesn't work. So the animation that we want is the spin one. And that's how it's gonna do it. It's gonna do it on its axis. So that's not what we want. We want to control select that one with the circle and we're going to group and then we're going to add the animation of that one. By the way, once you group an object, any animation disappears. So it's gonna do it like that roughly. Now, it's a bit annoying to get it perfect, I find. It does do that kind of moving in with it. It is a little bit trial and error how I've gotten this to work. What I tend to do is I will insert a larger circle, very, very slightly larger just around it to make a rim and I'm going to send it to back and I'm going to make sure that they are aligned like that. And then if I make it a color that matches it, I'm going to select like this and group them like we did before. And then let's try the animation again of spin. So there you go. 
Now we do all the same thing. So this is going to be, again, can't do a stupidly high number. So 59 and one, and we're going to take this and we're going to control to duplicate it. Let's start with a 15, control to duplicate it. So 15 is going to be about there. And then we're going to take 60 and put it just here on the top. And then we're going to take that one, control shift drag to keep it in the middle and 45, control drag and that one there and type in 30. Obviously we wanna get all of these inside the slide. And that is kind of it. You do need a little bit of guesswork and to be honest, a little bit of luck with how you do these because even now, I got my animation pane, it is still moving around a tiny bit, but since it's going quite slowly, you won't notice that. So this will be a pretty decent one. Now, another thing that you could do to enhance it is to give it a little sound after it does it and it'll kind of move around. So I'm going to add an animation that's adding a second animation to the same object. I'm gonna choose this one, Tita, which kind of looks a bit like that, but if I just make this one sort of three seconds and this one zero, so we can see what it does fasterwards. Uh, and then for this one, we're going to, the, the one we just added, we're going to say start after previous. So the timeline will be that just after the other one finishes. And we're also going to right click and go to effect options. And in effect options, we're going to select a sound. The two that I find work are the one that says click Kind of looks like that. And if we do the whole thing, three seconds around like that. So that one kind of works okay. And let's do it for the other one. So I'm going to actually just duplicate this object into a new slide so that it's easier to work with. Control M is a shortcut for a new slide. And this one, I'm going to make it to three seconds and zero delay just to see how it goes fast. And then I'm going to add an animation. I'm going to choose the Tita one again. I actually won't do anything here because this is already flown out. So do the same thing after previous. And this will just be for the sound really. And then with the sound, I'm going to right click and effect options. And I'm going to choose the typewriter. I tried them all. And those are the ones that are the least ridiculous because they're pretty outlandish otherwise. I'm going to pray from the end and we'll see what it looks like. There you go. There's no teeter because the object doesn't exist anymore. And of course, if you want to go with the full hog and have professional animations, then the home tab or the insert tab, depending on which version, you have add-ins. So here we have the add-ins window and we can just search for timer. And there are all these timers that you can add to do that for you. But I just shown you how to do it built in within PowerPoint. It's not great, but it does work if you want to do that very easily without having any add-ins. So once again, I'll keep this one as something that you can download and play with on your own. And I'll end it there. So my name is David Milam and I have tons of videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I find this is quite a useful trick to know and understand. Thanks for watching.